A little over a year ago, I built these temporary shelves in the closet that's in my office. And from day one, they've been collecting this unorganized junk that you see here. So in my usual style, rather than try to deal with the mess directly, I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to hide it behind the door that I'm building right now. This door will match the other doors that I already built for the house. And if you want to watch a full video of me doing that, there's a link in the description. It gives a lot more detail than I can show here. The other doors that I built were painted white. I was more selective with this one to pick out good material because I want to leave this natural and clear finish it with water-based polyurethane that matches the ceiling in my office that I recently did. It can't be that heavy. It's less than... It's less than... Oh. Ah. With the door done, I can move on to making the rollers in the track. And I gave this a lot of thought as to how I wanted to do it. I wanted it to basically get the bulk of it made from wood. Like I didn't really want any metal parts. So the first challenge really was to find something to use as a bearing so that the wheels would spin freely and not wear out prematurely. I've got this empty caulking tube and the plastic that these are made from is really slick. And of course you can't beat the price, so well worth a try anyway. I could then figure out how big the wheels need to be and then drill a hole in the middle and the drill bit that I had wasn't quite big enough so I drilled the hole first and then I reamed it out a little bit more with the drill bit so that I wouldn't have so much sanding to do to fine tune it up to the correct size. And then this is just decorative but I drilled four holes around the perimeter and it makes it look more attractive I think more like a wheel. I could then cut out the wheels with the jigsaw and fine-tune the roundness of them on the belt disc sander and then I can bring it to the router table and round over all of the sharp corners. With that done I can cut out the track from a piece of hard maple and I'm more or less designing this as I go along but I know the length of the track needs to be twice the width of the door and it also needs a groove for the wheels to ride in, and I'm doing that in a series of cuts. Next thing I did was cut out the parts for the hangers that the wheels will mount on. And I'm using the same 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood that I use on the wheels. And I thought about what way I could design these, but I ended up leaving them very simple. And I also wanted to see what these would look like with just a clear finish, because my original idea was to paint these black. To allow the wheel to turn freely, I need to cut a rabbit in the retainer that goes on the back and give me enough clearance. And again, I'm doing that on the router table. I've got a straight cutting bit installed that's sticking up just like a sixteenth of an inch. And I'm using the adjustable wings on the fence to guide the circle as I cut the recess. As you can see here, when it goes on, the wheel is free to turn and to secure it in place, I'm going to use two screws only. I'm not going to put any glue on this because I want to be able to take this apart later so that I can lubricate it. So that completes the hangers and they're ready to install. But I did have one other thing that I forgot to do with the door when I was making it. And that was to cut a recess in the bottom for a guide pin that will be on the floor. And I could have made this a lot easier by making that center piece of plywood like a half inch shorter. So instead I made a quick and dirty guide for my trim router and cut the slot with that. I could then bring the door into the office and stand it in place against the wall. And the floor in this house is 
not very level, so I had to shim it up so that it was close. And then I put the truck on top of the door, shimmed up by the thickness of a number 20 biscuit. That gives me enough clearance underneath for the door to move. And I can mark the location for the track on the wall. This door is made from less than two sheets of half inch plywood, so it's not very heavy. And to mount the track, I'm just using four screws, which will be more than adequate to hold this up. One thing here, though, is that I'm just doing this temporarily because what I need to do is I'll need to take this off again at some point in the future. When I trim around the door in the closet, the trim will stick out past the wall and I'll need to locate my track on that so that the door will clear it. When that happens, I'll make a video about it and I'll post that on my home reno channel. So the track is installed. Now I can bring the door back over and set it back up on those shims on the bottom and make sure that it's level again. And then I can put one of the hangers up to mark the locations for the screws that I'll use to mount this. Okay, while you're watching me screw the hangers onto the door here, I'll point out that the screws that you see in the truck will be covered with plugs after I take this off and reinstall it again. Even though I like the look of the screws and the hangers themselves, I don't like those screws showing in the truck. Okay, so with both hangers installed, I can try it out and see how it rolls. Pretty smooth, actually. Like I said earlier, when I take this down again to reinstall it with the trim, what I'll do is I'll take the wheels out of the hanger and I'll get some grease around those axles to make it roll even smoother. One last thing to do is to add stops to the ends of the track. And these are very simple. These are just pieces of the same maple as the track that are cut on an angle on the end so that stops the wheel as it rolls over. I'm going to glue that in here and I'll do the same on the other end. 